Let's say you've been tasked with creating a web page that displays employee reviews, and the authorization requirement is that an employee should be able to see the review, but no one else's. That means you can't use roles to decide if a review should be displayed. The review contains a reference to the user being reviewed, so it needs to be part of the authorization evaluation. So today, let's take a peek at how entity-based authorization is handled in ASP.NET Core. So this is the first of a series of videos where I'll cover what entity-based authorization is, and then I'm gonna do a crazy deep dive on authorization handlers and round it out with a video on unit testing entity-based authorization policies. My name's Jeff Zerline. I've been a DBA and a developer for many years, and I'm here to pass along some of the tips and the tricks that I've learned along the way. Now, if you find my content interesting and helpful, please hit the like button, or better yet, hit the subscribe button. Now, there were several of you who reached out and asked if I could provide the source code for the projects in my videos, so this time I'm going to include a link to GitHub so you can download the source code and follow along. So the first thing we have to address is that entity-based authorization can't happen in the authorization middleware component of the ASP.NET Core pipeline. So why is that? Well, model binding doesn't happen until later in the process, so we won't be able to get an object to interact with our authorization policy. That has a significant impact on us. It means that we have to wait until the controller gets instantiated to perform the check. And there's going to be a whole lot more of allocations and probably a bunch of out of process calls to a database that you wouldn't get with a role or a claim based authorization check. So there is a performance hit for using entity based authorization. And here's my strategy for mitigating that performance hit. Use two authorization policies. One is a standard role group or claim based authorization check that can be placed on the controller endpoint. And the goal is to reject that request as soon as possible because it conserves resources. If an unauthenticated user attempts to hit the endpoint, there's no point in running the entity based authorization check. It's better to just short circuit the request and return an unauthorized response. The second authorization policy is the one that takes in the entity and evaluates if the user can execute the action. All right, so here's a little sample app that I can use to demonstrate entity-based authorization. In this case, Jane has an employee evaluation, and if I log in as Jane, you can see that it displays the evaluation. If I were to log out and log back in as her supervisor, you can see I've got a different user ID here as a claim, but the review doesn't show up. And that's because the only authorization policy that I've got set up is the user can see their own employee review. All right, so let's take a look at the code that defines these authorization policies. I'm here in the program CS file, and I've defined the policy that I'm going to be using, and I'm actually gone ahead and pulled that from a static class that I'll show you here in a second. Uh, but I just called it get user can view policy. And I've also added the authorization requirement uh, add to dependency injection so that it's available when it needs to do the evaluation of those authorization policies. All right, here you can see I've defined a static class called employee review policies. And the purpose of the class is to allow me to define all the policies that I'll use in the application without having to clutter up the program CS file. So it makes it a little easier to manage those policies. Uh, you can also take note that I've defined constant strings uh, as names for the policies because policies will be uh, included in dictionaries and they need a, a consistent name. So, Authorization policies are comprised of a set of authorization requirements, and all of the authorization requirements have to pass in order for the policy to pass. So the first thing we need to do in building out that check is to build an authorization requirement. All right, so here is our entity-based authorization requirement. And one of the first things we need to do with this class is we need to implement the iAuthorization requirement interface. Now there are no methods on that, there's no properties on that interface, it's really just a marker interface so that we can go ahead and put uh, multiple authorization requirements into a collection. It's the collection type. So the other thing we need to do is we need to inherit from an authorization handler. It's actually it's an abstract authorization handler and there's two variations of that uh, abstract class. 
One will take in an authorization requirement as a generic parameter. The other one has two parameters. There's an authorization requirement, and then there's a resource, or what I refer to as an entity. And so in our case, that's going to be the requirement and the employee review. All right, so there's one method that we need to implement, and that is the handle requirement async. And what that does is it takes in three parameters. It takes in a context, and that's going to be uh, a set of all the other authorization handlers along with the result or the outcome of these evaluations, along with the requirement, in this case, the user is subject of review requirement, and also the entity or the resource, the employee review object. So once I've got these three pieces in my handle, a, handle requirement async function, I can go ahead and I can start to perform that evaluation. And the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what the user ID is. And so I can look through the user's claims and I can look for an issuer. And in here, I've got my organization list as the issuer. But basically, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the user ID claim is coming from my application. So that issuer is a way to specify your application. Uh, and then it's just a matter of changing that string into an integer, looking to make sure that there is an employer review that was passed into the authorization uh, requirement and making sure that the employee ID matches with the user ID. And if it matches, it takes that context that was passed in and it calls the succeed method and you pass in the requirement. The reason for this is that the authorization handler contract context keeps track of the reason for the success and any failures that might have, uh, have occurred as it gets passed along. And at the end, it just returns back a task, completed task, because the there is no output from this uh, authorization requirement. The result of the authorization policy really comes in the form of the context. All right, so now we've got all the puzzle pieces put together. We just need to go ahead and use them in the application. All right, so I'm looking here at the home controller for this MVC application. And in the index action, I'm just creating a list of employee reviews and I'm just passing that list into the view. Now in that view, I'm going to need access to the policies because I have to actually execute the authorization policy on each of those items that are in the list to decide whether or not they should be displayed in the, in the view. So I've gone ahead and included the using for both the domain entity which would be the employee review, as well as the policies. And when I get down here to the employee review section, you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually calling uh, the authorized async method of the authorization service. So where'd that come from? All right, I'm hiding it. It's actually uh, an injection of the authorization service in the view imports file so that it's available for any of the views that I'm going to need to do an authorization check on. So I can go ahead in the index CSHTML file and I can loop over each of the different employer reviews that were in that collection that was passed into the view. And for each one, I'm going to actually call authorize async. And you can see here that I'm passing in the user, I'm passing in the review, and I'm passing in the user can review policy name because I need to specify which policy I want to have evaluated. And then if that does pass, then I can go ahead and display uh, an anchor tag with the employee name. And that's what you see on the screen when we log in as Jane and we display Jane's uh, employee review. So again, if we go ahead and we run the application, do, 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 need a faster computer, here we go. I can log in as Jane and I can see her review but if I log out and log in as her supervisor, I don't get the review because it hasn't passed the authorization policy when the user ID doesn't match the employee ID on the employee review. All right, so this is a real simple way to uh, execute an authorization policy inside of a view. But the reality is, is you can use that authorization service and specifically the authorize async function 
in a controller or in any other piece of code so that you have a way to determine if an authorization policy is going to pass or fail. And so if you wanted to do this in a web API, it would be perfectly fine to inject the authorization service into your, your controller and then in the action of the controller, uh, execute the authorize async function to determine if the user should be able to actually execute that action. All right, so this is enough to cover for now. Again, I'm going to actually do multiple parts in this series. And so the next one is going to be an incredibly deep dive on authorization handlers. And that means we're gonna go out to Microsoft, we're gonna get the source code for authorization from GitHub, and we'll take a look at some of that source code so that you get a really deep understanding of how authorization works, and in particular, entity-based authorization or resource-based authorization, however you like to refer to it. All right, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn some more about authorization, then check out the video over here, or, or is it here? Or I, I don't know. Anyway, one of these corners, there's some videos. Watch them. Hope you enjoy them. Thanks.